Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make a 500 watts dual rail switch mode power supply for an audio power amplifier. The circuit is based on the IR2153D IC and the complete schematics is as shown. The intended input voltage is about 12 to 15 volts and this can be a redacent battery or 4 lithium ion batteries connected in series. At the input you have a pi filter made up of the inductor L1 and the capacitor C5 and C6. All the low voltage capacitors are written for a voltage of at least 25 volts and the capacitance values are as shown. Ensure the inductor is written for at least 30 amperes, continuous DC current and at least 100 microhenries. The AC gets its power via the diodes D6 and the resistor R5. R5 is written 22 ohms and at least 1 watt and D6 is written for at least 1 ampere. You can use the FR107 or the UF4007. Pin 1 is VCC and across this at ground you have the capacitors C3 and C2 connected as shown to filter the input voltage to the IC to ensure that it's very steady. The frequency of oscillation is set by the resistors R1 and the capacitor C1. To obtain a frequency of about 32 kHz, you can use the combination of 10 kilo ohms and 2.2 nanofarads as shown. The frequency formula is given by 1 or of um, 1.4 into R1 plus 25 ohms, or that multiplied by the value of CT as shown. Pin 2 is the LT pin connected to pin 3 through the resistor R1 as shown, and the timing capacitor pin 3 is connected to ground through the capacitor C1 as shown. Pin 4 is the common or the ground logic for the IC. Pin 5 is the low signed output, pin 7 is the high signed output. P6 is the high sign ground reference and because we'll be using the AC as a push-pull driver and not as a half-bridge driver, you can pull down P6 to ground as shown. P8 is the high sign voltage reference and pull it up to VCC as shown. P5 will be used for driving one half side of the power MOSFETs and P7 will be used for driving the other half side of the push-pull power MOSFETs. For the MOSFETs, ensure you use good MOSFETs with a high current handling capacity and a low internal drain source resistance when on. The working of the circuit is very simple. Once the IR2253 DS biased is shown, it will begin switching and you have two alternating passes at pin 5 and 7, which are complements of each other. Whenever 5 is high, 7 is low, and when 7 is high, 5 is low. So let's say in the first case you have a high output at pin 5 and a low output at pin 7. Because the transistor Q3 is a PNP transistor, it will conduct and basically pull down the gate of the MOSFET Q1 to ground or its source ensuring it remains completely off. But now you have a high pass at pin 5 through the resistor R3 through D2 and the gate of the MOSFET Q2. This will cause the MOSFET to turn on and begin conducting. The transistor Q4 is off. When Q2 conduct, now you have a current path flow from the positive DC rail through the low side of the primary winding through the MOSFET Q2 and to ground. After some time, the output at pin 5 will go low and that at pin 7 will go high. The transistor Q4 conducts because it's PNP and this connects the gate of the MOSFET Q2 to ground, causing it to turn off. Because you have a high output here, and through the resistor L2, through the diode D1 and the gate of the MOSFET Q1, it will turn on and begin conducting. It creates a current path flow from the positive DC rail through the upper half side of the primary ending, through the MOSFET Q1 and to ground. This is the second half cycle and this completes one oscillation. The process then repeats over and over again for the 2000 times per second. The capacitor C4 acts as a filter capacitor for the primary because at such high frequency switching, there will be small harmonics generated on the primary side and this basically shunts the high frequency AC to ground as shown. The diodes D1 are 1N4248 short key diodes. Ensure you use fast switching diodes, you can also use the FR107. To ensure that the IC get at least 15 volts even when the battery is operating at 12 volts, as the primary side is being switched, there will be small voltage spikes generated across it and this will cause the downs D3 and D4 to find bias and conduct and create a current path through the resistor R4 and change the 
storage capacity to and C3 as shown. This will ensure that the voltage at the VCC pin 1 is slightly above that of the prime bat battery voltage but it's no more than 15 volts because of the Zener diode D5. The IC also has a built-in Zener diode of 15.6 volts so ensure that the voltage of the Zener diode used is no more than 15 volts. It's rated for 3, 3 watts. But because you have a push-pull topology, so when the primary side is being switched, voltage will be induced on the secondary side due to mutual inductance and at the secondary side it's rectified by the downs D7, D8, D9 and D10 which are connected as a bridge rectifier and it's filtered by the inductor L2, L3 and the capacitor C7 through to C10. The capacitors are written for 375 volts. The secondary voltage will be divided into the rectifier diodes are written for a current of at least 10 amperes and a voltage of at least 100 volts. The inductance value and current rating are as shown. To regulate the output voltage, I've incorporated a feedback network based on the optocoupler, the PC817, and a simple divider network made up of the potentiometer R7 and R6 as shown. When the voltage across the whole secondary winding exceeds 100 volts, here you'll have a voltage drop of more than 1.5 volts, and this will cause the internal LED of the optocoupler to turn on and conduct. The internal transistor will conduct, and this will basically cause it to connect the VCC voltage of 15 volts to the base of the transistor Q5, which will short the CT pin 3 of the IC to ground as shown and this will cause the outputs at pin 5 and pin 7 to be off. And when the AC stops switching, the secondary voltage will cease increasing further. For the transformer, this is a ferrite transformer. You can use the ETD49 for a power of about 500 watts at a frequency of about 32 kHz. The primary turns are made up of 4 turns with a center tap giving 2 turns on each side with that being said, that marks the end of my video and I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. If so, make sure to give it a like, share with your friends, drop a comment if you have any, subscribe to my channel, have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.